So I want to show you a clip of what this great defense of capitalism is. No, and I don't mean Ben Shapiro. I mean Arthur Brooks. And I don't know if you guys know Arthur Brooks, but Arthur Brooks was the, for many, many years, was CEO of the um, uh, American Enterprise Institute, probably one of the most influential um, intellectuals on the right. Uh, not so much a YouTube celebrity, not so much a Facebook maybe celebrity, but in Washington, D.C., the guy everybody listens to. The guy everybody, his books were bestsellers. Everybody took this guy seriously, and everybody told me, this is the guy to learn from. This is the guy who really defends capitalism properly. So I want you, I want you to listen to how he defends capitalism. I want you to listen to how he defends capitalism, and we'll talk about it as he does it. So here he's being introduced. Of the pursuit and president of the American Enterprise Institute, Arthur Brooks joins me now. Arthur, I want to start with making something clear. You are not defending capitalism as it stands. You are saying this is a system, the spirit of the system works. Maybe it needs to be updated and improved. But what I loved, you traveled across. Again, notice the, the, the theme the Dalio has set that is now everywhere, that everybody's talking about, how to take the capitalist system that has existed today and improve it, right? Now, I don't believe we have capitalism today. We have statism today. We have a, some capitalism and a lot of statism. We have a mixed economy. And I believe the mixed economy could be improved by making it capitalist. But note what, how he views it, how he talks about it the world. Right. Mumbai, a small town in Kentucky. You right. went to a Himalayan Buddhist monastery and you saw... St so you went, it, it, she's talking about a documentary that Arthur Books is doing about capitalism, a moral defense of capitalism. And note that he went to all these poor places. He went to a Buddhist monastery in the Himalayas in an effort to defend capitalism. It's, somebody, uh, Michael says, it's nauseating. It really is nauseating. It's disgusting. It is truly disgusting, but this is what you have to do. If you're an altruist, in order to defend capitalism, you have to go and find, you know, the people in the worst shape in the world who might have benefited a little bit from a little bit of freedom and show that that is what the essence of capitalism is. Don't go to Wall Street, God forbid. Don't go to Silicon Valley, God forbid. Don't go to where real wealth is being created. You have to go to a monastery somewhere. Similarities in these places that one would think have nothing in common. Yeah, no, it's true. When you find people that are earning their success, they're serving others, they're part of the community, they're being lifted up through entrepreneurship. It's so they're earning their success, they're serving others, and they're part of the community, and they're lifting others. That's the essence of capitalism for him, serving others, being part of a community. Yeah, you're lifting yourself up, but that's not the main issue. It's society, it's the community, it's the altruism that is everything here. Incredibly inspirational. You know, the truth of the matter is, since I was a kid, two billion people have been pulled out of poverty, largely because of the American free enterprise system spreading around the world. Now, that does not mean we don't need regulation. <laughs> so note, the key statistic, the most important statistic is the people who are being brought out of poverty. Now, I like that statistic. I use it all the time. But that's the whole theme. That's the whole justification. And, of course, immediately he has to say, it doesn't mean we don't need regulation. Not mean that we don't need basic human morality. It doesn't mean we don't need morality because we know capitalism doesn't have morality. So we need to overlay morality onto capitalism. We know capitalism is not really a moral system. So remembering how we can improve this system from generation to generation without throwing it out is the only way we can increase opportunity and, and, and alleviate poverty around the world today. Then why do you see so many millennials and young Americans simply rejecting the idea of capitalism? Well, they're actually not. I mean, what they're doing is they're going to, you know, some anti-capitalist rally in an Uber. Now notice, I've noticed this, a lot of people are doing this. They, I, they are saying that the young people aren't actually socialist because they use iPhone. They're not actually socialist because they use Uber. I mean, 
mean, this would be like saying Karl Marx was not a socialist because, I don't know, what was the te latest technology at the time? He used a printing press. Or uh, Karl Marx was not a socialist because he was living in London, benefiting from a capitalist economy. And I mean, this is so anti-intellectual, so anti-ideological. Of course, socialists use technology. They're not against technology. They just want the state to run it. They want the state to own it, and they want massive redistribution of wealth. Somebody says Karl Marx was rich. No, Karl Marx was actually very poor. It was Engels who was rich. Engels, actually, family was a rich family that had benefited from capitalism, and Engels is the person who financed Karl Marx. Karl Marx didn't work, he just wrote, and that was financed by Engels, who was, came from a rich family. But it's mind-boggling to me that the, 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 the idea that, oh, no, 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 the millennials are not real socialists because ideas don't matter. What really matters is that they're using their iPhone. I mean, that is such a concrete-bound, anti-intellectual mentality. Now, again, author books is, 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 is the best the right has to offer, is the best conservatives have to offer. And this is exactly what Ayn Rand told us. The conservatives are the real enemies of capitalism. The conservatives, it's a conservative default that makes the disappearance of capitalism almost inevitable. And, and you know, I, I get it. They're actually very, they're, they're, they're part of the capitalist system. What they don't like are the predations that they see, the extreme inequality of opportunity. The extreme inequality of opportunity. What? That's what's upsetting the millennials who are going to Harvard and are going to, really? And that's a big opportunity for us to have this conversation. Look, what we need is presidential candidates and politicians today that are not saying throw out capitalism, we need socialism. We, don't, we need to balance the ideas of an economy where we have a great safety net that's really reliable and have people argue about how big it should be and what it should do. There we go. So the way to defend capitalism is to argue for the welfare state. You know, yeah, we should argue maybe conservatives think the welfare state should be smaller. And other people might think the welfare state should be bigger, the socialist. But we need a balance. We need both. And like Dalio and these other people at the Milken Conference, what is Arthur Brooks telling us? We need a conversation. We need to get together. We need to have a dialogue. We need, we need to sit in a room, and those of us who want more capitalism or more freedom will argue for that, and those of us who want more socialism will argue for that, and we'll come out with some kind of balance. I mean, it is... Pathetic. And it's the way you lose. Where's the passion? Where's the commitment to freedom? Where's the commitment to individual values, the individual pursuit of values? Where's the commitment to entrepreneurship and the freedom that entrepreneurship requires? Where's the understanding of where wealth comes from? All the discussion is, all the discussion is how to distribute it. Where's the discussion of how to create it, how to create more of it? Not from Arthur. And the only way you can pay for it is with a free enterprise system that lifts people up and gives them opportunity. There we go. So what's good is the welfare system. And you have to pay for the welfare system. So how are we going to pay for the welfare system? We can only pay for the welfare system if we give people enough freedom so we can then steal their money, so we can then milk them, For, you know, for the funds to fund the welfare system. So the standard, what makes it good, what makes capitalism good in these people's mind is that it is a system that creates wealth so that we can steal it. Because what makes it good is not the creating the wealth. What makes the system good is that we, can that, that, that we create enough wealth so we can do redistribute it. It's the redistribution that is moral. The wealth creation, that's egoistic. That's not moral. That's not right. That's not just. That just is. It truly is stunning, right, that this is the way capitalism is being defended. Not just today. I, you know, go read... Uh, 
you know, what is capitalism and capitalism and an idea by Ayn Rand. And she talks about this as being the way conservatives defended capitalism in the 1950s, in the 1960s. Nothing has changed. It's only worse because there are fewer conservatives who are any good. More and more of them are this. And then most of them are just non-intellectual at all. Then the answer is somewhere in the middle. Earlier yes, we were speaking middle. about Perfect. Democratic candidates who are rallying against Wall Street. a little bit of mixed of socialism. We have to remind our capitalism. audience, it's not just Democrats. When President Trump was running in 2016, no, he was railing against Wall Street, against Hillary Clinton and the Goldman Sachs speeches. He was then elected and then... Fl why is Goldman, why is Wall Street associated with Hillary Clinton? Right? Because of cronyism. But is cronyism just Hillary Clinton? Is cronyism just Wall Street? I mean, if cronyism is the problem, then cronyism is the problem. Not, not Wall Street. It's cronyism. ...himself with Goldman Partners. But <clears throat> are Democrats making a That's mistake right. or a wrong calculation in just going against Wall Street? Wall Street isn't just a bunch of bankers and hedge fund managers. When you think about the rise in stock prices... Wall Street isn't just bankers and hedge fund managers. What does she mean by that? She means Wall Street isn't just the bad guys those evil bastards, the bankers and hedge fund guys who don't do anything productive. Wall Street is also, she says... Some of the greatest beneficiaries, pension plans. Yeah, Wall Street is good. Wall Street is good. Not because it allocates capital efficiently across the economy. Not because it is the fundamental engine of wealth creation. Not because it has created the most efficient way to allocate capital and thus to create real wealth and to raise the standard of living of all of us. Wall Street is good because the stock market goes up and pension plans benefit. The common person benefits. What is all pension plans. Say? Who are those people? Right. Hardworking um, nurses. Yeah, hardworking uh, you know, nurses. The man on the are making money. That's good. Benefit. Bankers. Uh, yeah, we, we don't want them to make Wall money. Street. Do we understand who that is? We don't. And it's just a boogeyman. It's just an easy thing to do. And look, the right and the left, they do that because we're so polarized. We're so locked down. And one of the things I'm trying to do in this. All right. So one of the problems, this is, this is what they always do, right? The real problem in America today is we're polarized. We don't get along. We haven't got together. We're not singing kumbaya. Polarization, that's the problem. It's not bad ideas. It's not bad politicians. It's not bad universities. It's not bad philosophies, ideologies. No, we just don't get along. If only we just turned the other cheek and lo loved our enemy. Here we go, here we go movie is to relax some of these things you know in point of fact it's a complicated situation in our economy all of no, us could be not. better all of us should love our neighbors and even love our enemies there we go christianity rearing its ugly head christianity uh, this is why they can't defend capitalism this is why they cannot defend capitalism it's all about loving our neighbors and even loving our enemies and capitalism is not about loving your neighbor and loving your enemy. Capitalism is about going out there and creating wealth and figuring out what is a value, what is really valuable. Being an entrepreneur and figuring out what will people actually value, what is going to enhance other people's lives, what is going to make their life better, and they'll be willing to pay for it. That's what capitalism is about. It's about entrepreneurs figuring out what's really a value for human being and what's not. What promotes human life and what doesn't? What people are willing to pay for and what they're not? Not, be not because, not because they're turning the other cheek, not because they love their neighbor, not even because they love their customers like themselves, but because they're trying to make money and because they love the challenge and because changing the world is a beautiful thing. But changing the world for their own egoistic reasons. Profit is a beautiful thing because profit cannot be attained unless you create value for someone. And the more profit, the more value you've created. But even that is not discussed here. 
No. We just need to all get together. We need to love our neighbor. We need to love our enemies. And we need to sit down and find the middle ground. And the middle ground should be more capitalism, he thinks, he would say. But this milquetoast defense of capitalism is what conservatives have secret to, to coming together. What I'm hoping is we go into a new election season, there'll be a few people out there who say, yeah, I'm in favor of capitalism. I'm also in favor of a strong safety net. That's real. There we go. I'm in favor of a mixed economy. Everybody's in favor of a mixed economy. Actually, that is exactly what Elizabeth Warren says. She says she's in favor of capitalism and she wants a strong safety net people up and education reform and i'm not going to pretend that just pouring more money into the public education system is going to fix it we need people with right, a new a view of these things and understand that wall street is not evil on the contrary uh, you know this is basically the reason portions that people, of it are or individuals oh, can be people, or acts can people be are very imperfect absolutely but you know if you go look at generation ago well, people saying CEOs. People. there are business practices that you could say are evil without a doubt there are business practices that we absolutely need to change there's regulations that we needed to change. This is great. I mean, this is an opportunity for us. Note that at best he could say we need to change regulations. I mean, uh, to do it. But remember, the American free enterprise system is our gift to the world, and it's actually making all of this wealth possible so we can have this conversation in the first place. It's also not unique to the United States. Gift to the world. States in Spain's oh, election on Sunday, mm. the Socialist Party there picked up 123 right. seats. Now that is a bit shy of the majority. All right, that's enough. I think that's enough of uh, of uh, of Arthur Brooks. But that's just an indication. That's just a, 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 a you know a tiny flavor of what is going on in the world today. Nobody's defending capitalism. Nobody can define capitalism. Did he define capitalism? Did he talk about what capitalism is? There's just... The conservatives are pathetic. That's, I, I think that's the best one can say about them. Right? I mean, she was... Uh, there was no difference between her and him. They all want a mixed economy. They all want the benefits of capitalism so they can suck like parasites suck the wealth out, suck the wealth that's created by the few entrepreneurs that are out there and hand it over to people who don't deserve it, who haven't earned it, who haven't made it. And nobody, nobody challenges that. Nobody stands up for that. Now, I strongly, strongly encourage you all to read um, Capitalism, Not an Ideal, to read Ayn Rand, to read what a proper defense of capitalism has to be. And a proper defense of capitalism has to start with understanding the nature of man, understanding the nature of man as a rational being, and understanding that every human being has the capacity to take care of themselves. And the few that don't rely on the people who do. And there are two ways to rely on the people who do. Stealing from them or their charity. And stealing is never right, no matter how many people vote for it. No matter how many people get together and say it's okay, stealing is never right. So those who cannot take care of themselves rely on the charity of others. There's just no other way. No other way. By the way, other books ran the most you know, the biggest conservative organization, not the second biggest after Heritage, the American Enterprise Institute. He is considered a real conservative. And the, 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 the representative of conservative ideas out there. That is what conservatism is about. That is what Ayn Rand showed conservatives was about 50 years ago. It hasn't changed. 60 years ago, it hasn't changed. Um, what do you think is going to happen to the United States of America if we keep going this way? If we keep going this way, total collapse. But I still think that we won't be keep going this way that what will save this country is not its intellectuals, but the people. Because they've rebelled already without much pr intellectual prodding, that they've already becoming aware of the fact that we have to go to the right and not more welfare state. That's a great, great uh, uh, tribute to the intelligence of the people. Only I want to make something clear. I'm not a conservative. 
I think that today's conservatives are worse than today's liberals. I think they are, if anyone destroys this country, it will be the conservatives, because they do not know how to preach capitalism, uh, to explain it to the people, because they do nothing except apologize, and because they're all altruists. They're all based on religious altruism. And on that combination of ideas, you cannot save this country. Mm -hmm. The trouble with this country is that it was based on the right philosophy originally by the founding fathers, but they did not have a moral code to match the, the political ideas which they had. You love this country, don't you? Passionately. Yeah. Very, very much. And consciously. I love it for its ideas. And I've seen enough of the other side so I can appreciate this country. You might even...